I first of all want to thank you all very much for braving the long path down here from the show floor uh, and for spending some time uh, out of that busy show schedule with us and our topic here today. So it's going to be about collagen. That is what Jolita does. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And collagen is the hot ingredient. We know that. Collagen is hot. It's in the press. It has been through the whole two years. We've basically been scooped up at home. Um, but the prediction is also it's continued that way. It's an ingredient uh, that is gaining a lot of attention. And the prediction is it will well continue for the next four or five years. With that, of course, new product launches with collagen are continuously increasing. And we see that solid CAGR of 22%. And for 2021, we are on the same trajectory. There will be a good number of new launches with collagen. The interesting thing and, and the noteworthy thing is really collagen is a hot ingredient around the world. This is not like one spot on the globe. What you really can see is it's everywhere. So uh, EMENA region is seeing like that growth, Asia, Latin America, and here in North America. Consumers understand collagen, they look for collagen, and they are very interested in the topic. So today I'm not spending time on telling all the benefits about collagen, uh, because collagen is basically already out there. What I want to do today is focus a little bit more on how can collagen be an innovation driver in the sports and active nutrition field, um, because collagen has some interesting properties in that area. And what you see is the industry, or like, like the community, the sports and active nutrition community, is picking up on these topics. And that is how people talk. These are just some snippets, how they talk about connective tissue and the importance in sports and physical activity. Before we dive into some areas of innovation with regards to sports and active nutrition, I want to start with some foundation and talk a little bit more about how important connective tissue really is for muscle tissue. Because muscle fibers don't exist on their own. They are basically surrounded by a network of uh, connective tissue, the white tissue that you see here in this left-sided picture. Um, and even you find it in muscle, uh, there's a lot of connective tissue. And these white tissues play very important roles in uh, performance in adaption to training and in recovery uh, from exercise. And uh, these connective tissues, they are mainly comprised of collagen fibers. And uh, they are expressed in the right side. You see, uh, we talk about muscle fascia, bones, cartilage, tendons. That is the connective tissue framework. And they play a very important role because what this connective tissue basically does, it transforms muscle work, muscle power into effective movement. But what also happens is that most people have no idea, they don't think about it, they don't care about it until it really hurts. So if you have like an um, Achilles tendon rupture, if your joints hurt, IT band issues, you name it, then you start thinking about these tissues. And uh, the point is, this is also an indicator how much stress is put on these tissues when you exercise. So here, this slide shows really the importance of the uh, white tissue for the muscle. So each muscle fiber is basically encased in layers of connective tissue, and they organize the muscle fibers, but they are basically also in charge to transmit the mechanical force that the muscle fibers generate to bones and uh, um, basically get you into the whole effective movement um, activity. Until recently, it was really the understanding that this tissue, this white tissue, the connective tissue, is a very static tissue, uh, which not much turnover. Um, now, there are more studies out there showing it's quite a contrary. For example, this study that I'm showing here shows that collagen protein turnover rates uh, in tendons, ligaments, cartilage, and bone tissue are actually within a range which is quite similar to that of skeletal muscle. So basically 1 to 2% within 24 hours. So now that we have established how synergistic and important for each other these 
red tissues, basically the muscle tissue, and the white tissue, the connective tissue are, so, so far are they in their composition. So muscle tissue, you see here on the left-hand side, muscle tissue is very high in essential amino acids. On the far right opposite side is basically the human collagen in the body, which you see is not high in essential amino acids, but high in proline and glycine. So when we all think about a classic uh, sports and active nutrition approach, all the high quality um, uh, amino acid protein supplements, they cater very, very well to the human muscle. Um, but actually only collagen supplements truly have that composition of amino acids that optimally cater to human collagen. So, but providing the right building blocks for uh, the respective tissue is only one part uh, of, the, of the story, of the story of collagen supplementation for active uh, nutrition. The other part is that these collagen peptides, particularly when you use specific bioactive collagen peptides, have a stimulatory effect. So they, if, if you have the right peptides in a composition, and collagens are not all the same, it's always a, a composition of peptides, so, so you really need a specific product, and if you have the right composition, and uh, you, you stimulate the target cell in the body, you can get increased connective tissue metabolism in your own body. So it's like a lock and key mechanism. You have this bioactive component that can stimulate a connective tissue metabolizing cells for increased optimal activity. With that in mind, and, and we have seen that continuously through our research, Jalida um, has this portfolio approach to, um, uh, um, to health and nutrition. So basically, we have specific peptide compositions uh, that are always targeted for a specific health benefit, and that health benefit depends very much on which cell this particular peptide composition can stimulate best. So for example, if you look into fibroblasts, um, there is a very soil which stimulates fibroblasts exceedingly well and gets the highest metabolic activity out of these cells, while like chondrocyte cells, uh, uh, which are basically producing the connective tissue in your joints, uh, are much better stimulated by a different composition of collagen peptides, so we market that as Fortigel. For muscle, muscle cells, uh, the body balance and future peptendur, and then for bone cells, osteoblasts and osteoclasts, we have the 40 bone. So we always target like a specific peptide to specific cell stimulation. Based on that, let's look at the first possible innovation driver in uh, sports nutrition based on uh, bioactive collagen peptides, which is improved body composition and performance. So what Shalita has been doing over the past years is really driving the science uh, with regards to body composition. And uh, what you see here is the result. It's, we started with older sarcopenic uh, men losing basically muscle power and strength uh, due to aging. And uh, we worked our way uh, through many um, uh, target groups. And what we always did is basically the setup is the same. They have to do physical exercise. You have to exercise to maintain your muscle and your strength. But they also supplemented uh, with 15 gram of a specific collagen peptide. In that case, it's the body balance. Um, and we, we looked at the difference. And what you see here is the results. So, so what you can see in orange is basically the group uh, that always uh, exercised and supplemented with the body balance compared to the gray results, which are uh, a non-protein placebo and the same exercise. And what you see, exercise is great. You have effects. You have a tremendous increase in lean body mass and a decrease in body fat, but you can really amplify it by the additional supplementation of the body balance, which is the easier part. What you can also see, this is consistent. We see that in all studies. And I want, to, I want you to focus to the right uh, to a study that we have done with only a female subject group, which is quite rare in the area of sports and active nutrition. And also these women responded perfectly uh, to their nutritional intervention. Now you see basically the results from before in orange. 
So we basically grouped all the results from our studies with men and all, uh, all the results from our study with women and we compared it to the literature just to give you an idea of the magnitude of what you are seeing here. So the literature in that case is being represented by uh, some meta-analysis out there uh, which looks into supplementing with high quality proteins, so the essential, high in essential amino acid, same setup, physical exercise, resistance exercise, and um, when you com it's just putting in comparison, you can see that uh, the results with this body balance supplementation really are out there and give a, um, a very good effect. So it is very clear that muscle fibers alone is not enough to stimulate. You need to stimulate the white tissue as well. Recent studies show also that uh, there is an improvement, an improvement in endurance exercise when you supplement with particular collagen peptides, which we are going to market as the peptin doer. And what you can see here uh, are results from uh, time and trials, where if the athletes supplemented with the peptin doer, they just managed to run far further in the same period of time. One study has been published very recently, the other one is under preparation, so you can look out and, and uh, study more detail about that. Also, the mode of action is very intriguing. I'm not spending any time here to discuss it, um, but uh, please, please find us when you want to know more. Moving on to the second area of potential innovation in the active nutrition field, um, and that is reduced connective tissue wear and tear because that is the number one area of concern for many, many coaches, for many, many athletes. Uh, that is what happens a lot and keeps people from training. So in this slide, I summarized uh, all the uh, main studies for our Tendoforte product, and Tendoforte is targeted to support tendons and ligaments. And what you see here on the left is the result uh, uh, from a study that, that clearly showed improved ankle stability, reduced ankle sprains, and in the long term, uh, reduced incidence of injuries with the supplementation. The result in the middle is more focusing on active uh, sports-related activities, which are always usually abrupt and putting a lot of stress on your system, like running, starting, stopping, changing directions, jumping. Um, athletes were able to do that all better. Um, and on the far right, the scientists were able to recover in a trial um, some runners, uh, twice as many runners, which didn't respond to the traditional rehabilitation. They were out of the training, they couldn't run. Um, they got this nutritional intervention and they came back to training and to exercise. But we also pioneer the joint health, joint support um, area uh, uh, with the research. So, we have the 40 gel collagen peptides that have been researched, I would say, since the 70s. Uh, recently, with, with much more modern studies to, to confirm the effects, to confirm the benefits. And what you see here on the left is the result from a recently published trial with a 5 gram dose. And you see basically the 40 gel group versus the placebo group, a reduction in uh, um, exercise induced pain. A reduction from uh, overuse. Of course, both groups have statistic significant effects. Yeah, you, and you see also uh, with these pain measurements, you always have very high effects in the placebo group. That is normal. But you also see the trial gives an intergroup statistic significant difference. On the right hand side, you see a study done with a different collagen peptide, not so specified on joints, not so focused on joint support they also get a, a statistic significance in the group, but they fail statistic significance between groups, even though they use double the dose, same setup, same duration. So what I'm trying to point out here is really, you need, to, you need this stimulating bioactive component to have the effect, but then you can get very significant improvements and support with collagen peptides. A very recent uh, finding um, is a, a study that was published uh, only last month on bone health. For bone health, we have the 40 bone bioactive collagen peptides. Again, remember they are optimized to stimulate osteoblast activity in bone matrix formation. So we had a study with the 40 bone, five gram dose, uh, osteopenic women for a year. And when you look at the graph, it was a placebo controlled randomized study after the year, the study stopped 
the women were like informed about the results. The group that started with 40 bone had tremendous improvement in bone mass density. The placebo group had, of course, further reduction. They were in that age where you lose your bone mass. What happened is the women were so impressed with the results, they refused to stop. So the 40 bone group kept taking 40 bone. The placebo group said, I want the same what the other one have. And we kept going for another three years. And what you can see here is this continuous improvement over the course of time in bone mass density, while in a normal development, you would have found a continuous decline to aging. So these women could stay out of that red zone of osteoporosis. Why am I showing that here in a sports and active nutrition uh, a session? Is because you see same bone structures, like this very um, osteopenic, very brittle thin bones uh, in a lot of athletes. And we see a lot of interest coming from that field. Uh, you see stress fractures, you see a lot of issues with bone. And that can be a very, very interesting intervention. Again, it's collagen protein, nothing else. It's optimized collagen protein. But there is a lot of opportunity here. And we have also first case studies where like professional athletes really benefited from bone support with collagen peptides. Moving on to a little bit further removed topic, but a topic that grows more and more in interest, particularly with consumers that go into sports nutrition, active nutrition from a holistic approach and, and want this overall health benefit out of that product category, which is like immune support. So we go back to that picture uh, from the very beginning of the session where you see that white tissue in the body, we discuss the mechanical benefits and, and uh, the mechanical role of these tissues. But what we are doing basically now is we zoom in, we zoom in and we see the extra cellular matrix that basically comprises these tissues. And what you see here, this extra cellular matrix uh, is the area where a lot of our immune functions in the body happen. And who generates um, and the extracellular matrix are basically the fibroblast cells. And as I stated earlier, is you can stimulate fibroblast cells to have an increased metabolic activity, which basically results in a healthier um, um, extracellular matrix. So you basically, you make the playing field for uh, immune functions um, a better. Think about a soccer field. If it's nice and flat and well prepared, the players can just perform better than when it's rough and uneven and uh, very hard to play on. So we see in our studies that you get this stimulation, uh, um, you get this increased metabolic activity from fibroblast cells, and they have an increased uh, expression in all extracellular matrix components. Uh, another side note is also collagen as such um, uh, has an immune regulatory role and uh, can, uh, has, has some activity to downregulate inflammation, which is also always very important in sports recovery. So that is a very interesting area um, that will be more and more in the focus. So concluding what we went through in a short time period is um, we believe that collagen to support connective tissue can really be an innovation driver in that area of active and sports nutrition. We at Chalida will continue to pioneer uh, new positions and benefits of collagen with the science. Um, um, it's not about just putting with collagen on your label, it's really the benefit that you can bring to your consumers, to your customer group with the right ingredient. And another benefit of this portfolio approach or this very targeted approach I haven't mentioned yet is because these products are so optimized, they allow for a fairly low dose. So you can go in a lot of uh, creativity with regards to formulating new delivery systems. You can find new blends. There's a lot of room to play with. It also helps a lot with compliance. It's just easier to take lower doses over a longer period of time, so you get really the benefits to your consumer. With that, I conclude the presentation. Uh, of course, we can step into discussions and questions anytime, but you can also find us on the show floor, of course, uh, online, uh, LinkedIn, everywhere. So thank you very much for your time and 
any questions, I'm here. Thank you.